Hello, I'm Luca Dell'Anna. I'm a management advisor and the author of the book Ergodicity. And today I will discuss ergodicity as a non-binary property. Let's begin with a simple question. Is crossing the street an ergodic activity? To answer that, we can begin with a context that we know better in uh, the field of ergodicity, which is a Russian roulette. Is Russian roulette an ergodic activity? Usually to answer this question, we apply uh, the so-called ergodicity test, which is we compare two quantities, the population average and the time average, and we check whether they are identical. If they are, then we know that it's an ergodic property, that it's an ergodic activity. And if not, we know that it's a non-ergodic activity. So let's try to do that for Russian roulette. The population average of Russian roulette, which is the outcome of many people doing it once, is a win equal to five-sixths of the price. That is because, for example, if we have six people playing Russian roulette, we will end up with one person which is dead and five people which win a prize of, let's say, $1,000 each. The total is $5,000, and if we divide it by six people, we get basically five-sixths of the $1,000 the prize. So that's the population average, a win of five-sixths of the prize. Conversely, the time average, which is the average outcome of a, of a person performing the activity many times is that the person will be dead. Because if a person plays, the active, plays Russian roulette many times over, at some point they will hit the bullet and they will die. So the population and the time average of playing Russian roulette are different and therefore we can say that Russian roulette is a non-ergodic activity. Now let's move back to crossing the street and let's apply the same reasoning. The population average of crossing the street is that the street is crossed. If we take a million people crossing the street once, for example, what happens is that almost everyone will manage to cross the street. Of course, there will be one or two people maybe which will be involved in an incident with a car, for example, but for most of the people, the outcome will be that the street is crossed. And that's uh, almost the, time, the population average. Conversely, what's the time average? Well, it depends by what we mean with many when we say that it's a single person performing the activity many times. If we use the traditional idea of using an infinite time frame, we discover that the person crossing the street infinite times will end up dead. Earlier or later, they will be hit by a car, for example. But this doesn't really make sense for most people. For most people, the time frame of relevance is a lifetime. And for most people, if they cross the street of, uh, over their lifetime, they don't die. So for them, the time average is still that the, that the street has been crossed. So we get an apparent contradiction here. Crossing the street is both an ergodic and a non-ergodic activity, depending on the time frame we consider. Over an infinite time frame, it's a non-ergodic activity. But over a finite time frame, for example, a lifetime, it becomes um, an ergodic activity. And we can see this, the more practical activities uh, we consider, the more we get the same uh, apparent contradiction. Here, I plotted uh, somehow a, in an exaggerated way the probabilities of survival over time of three activities, the Russian roulette, skiing, and crossing the street. And what we see is that on the right side of the chart, which is for infinite time frames, they all tend to zero to the same outcome. And therefore, they're all non-ergodic activities. And in general, over infinite time frames, almost any activity in the world is non-ergodic. But that doesn't help us much in taking decisions. What's much more interesting is to look what happens over finite time frames, for example, over a lifetime. And here we can see that if someone plays uh, Russian roulette for the whole lifetime, their lifetime will be really short and they will die at some point. But what about skiing? Most people, if they ski over the lifetime, they will uh, 
they will not have any significant uh, injury, but there will be still be a significant percentage of people for which if they try to ski for a lifetime, at some point they will have um, a, career, uh, a skiing ending uh, injury, for example. Therefore, we can see that skiing is still non-ergodic, but still more ergodic than Russian roulette, for example. And crossing the street, that's way more ergodic than skiing and playing the Russian roulette, because most people over a lifetime, they do not suffer an incident by crossing the street. So what we can see from this chart, again, a bit exaggerated chart, is that for relevant time frames, relevant for the practical life of people, for example, a lifetime or a career or the duration of an investment, outcomes distribute on a spectrum is not like either zero or the same outcome that you will uh, have for many people playing the activity once, but instead we get a spectrum of outcomes. For some activities, they will, um, the outcome will be quite close uh, to the population average, and for other activities, it will be very far off. Therefore, it makes sense of asking ourselves questions such as, how much ergodic is an activity? And the answer is, it depends on how similar the time average and the population average are, are over relevant and finite time horizons. Again, for example, a career, a lifetime, or the duration of a relationship, or the duration of, um, of an investment. So, for all practical concerns, it never makes sense to use to check whether an activity is ergodic over an infinite time frame, but it makes much more sense to watch to look at finite time frames. We need to first to ask ourselves what is a relevant time frame, and then we can we can compute time average, population average, check how different they are, and based on that we can say how much ergodic an activity is. So just to summarize the two main takeaways uh, from today's brief talk. One is that in practical considerations, people never use infinite time frames. They always check limited, finite time horizons. For example, their lifetime or their career. And then the second takeaway is that ergodicity is, is a non-binary property. It's not binary like always ergodic or always non-ergodic, yes or no. But instead, we can talk about a spectrum of ergodicity. For each activity, we can ask ourselves, how much ergodic is the activity or how likely it is to behave ergodically for a participant. And this is again, it's very useful when we take decisions in the real life, for example, for an investment. We don't, of course, almost every investment at some point in the future, 10, 100, 1000 years, it will somehow end, maybe there will be a bankruptcy and so on. But that doesn't, doesn't really matter for most people. We want to know what the time investments, how it will behave, under which regime it will behave for the time horizon that we are um, likely to hold it, uh, to hold the investment in our portfolio. Thank you very much. That was it for me today. I discussed these concepts in much greater detail in my book, Ergodicity. And um, if you have any questions, see you in the Q&A session.